printing press was a remarkable democratizing technology. Uh, the printing press allowed for um, immediate unregulated distribution of, uh, of some fairly influential uh, documents. You could actually think of Luther's work as being uh, the original um, subject of peer-to-peer -peer distribution. You know, Luth Luther's theses were not meant for European-wide distribution, or even German-wide distribution. They were meant for his parish and his group of clergy. Uh, uh, and yet, immediately, people made unauthorized copies and distributed them around Europe. So that stands as sort of the first example of the, the, the dynamic effects of um, disruptive communicative technologies. Uh, now, within a short period of time, both the church and uh, the nation states that were emerging in Europe uh, gained control over printing uh, to a large degree, um, licensing presses, making sure that distribution was highly uh, regulated and controlled, and once again, uh, uh, capturing the, the most important parts of information flow. Uh, of course, they didn't do a perfect job, which is why historical change continued through the next few centuries. So it wasn't an instantaneous revolution, um, but one that was certainly uh, influential enough to leave its mark on the world. Several things happened uh, after the printing press uh, showed its powerful influence. Um, first, uh, the Catholic Church certainly did its best to undermine many of uh, Luther's claims and Calvin's claims um, and did its best to, uh, to uh, uh, enforce its control over the states in which it was heavily influential, but also um, do its best to clean up certain practices like indulgences and so forth. But uh, more importantly, um, all of the emerging nation states of, of Europe uh, made it very clear that they would control information flows to the best of their ability. Um, they started processes such as licensing printing presses, licensing printers, um, giving specific grants to specific printers for specific books, which is the sort of early predecessor to copyright. Um, and, and by doing this, they made sure that the books that flowed throughout a society were authorized, were the authorized editions, but also um, were um, within the control of the state, within the control of the king or the prince. And that had a tremendous effect on limiting uh, political change or putting, a, putting the brakes on political change for a number of centuries. It didn't stop the ideas from flowing, and the, uh, and the principles of, uh, of open communication remained as an ideal, um, right through the Enlightenment, uh, through the revolutions of the 18th century as well. Uh, the printing press certainly had the effect of disengaging uh, communication from a specific time and place, um, deterritorializing it, uh, taking a message out of its particular cultural context, its liveness, and, uh, and distributing it widely in a way that sort of rendered it as pure information. Um, this had a tremendous effect on how people thought of themselves, how people thought of the human project. Um, it had uh, uh, the op it gave people the opportunity to actually think of themselves as members of a larger community than the local. They could think of themselves as French or German or European or uh, as a citizen of the world. Um, right up through the the notion that uh, uh, you know you could actually have um, empathy for someone suffering in China. Um, and it was really only through the printing press that we could imagine ourselves in contact with people so far away. I'm, I'm actually fond of a phrase that comes out of Disney corporate culture called imagineering. Um, certain inventions, uh, many inventions in fact, alter our imagination. They, they are not just examples of engineering, they're examples of imagineering. So when you have something like the printing press in your town uh, and it's having an effect on daily life, it opens up a series of possibilities that were not imaginable just the day before. <clears throat> the rise of network communication, the installation of TCP IP, the, the notion that through this small plastic box you can be in real time contact with a friend in Jakarta, uh, no matter where you live, a friend in Vancouver, a friend in uh, Santiago. I mean, that's, that's actually a, a, a pretty profound change in, uh, in, in consciousness. It's not a change that's touched billions of people around the world, but it certainly touched hundreds of thousands of people around the world and, and certainly altered our expectations. We expect different things out of our 
out of our daily lives, expect different things out of our commercial relationships, our cultural relationships. If we're members of diasporic communities, we expect to be able to stay in touch with the cultural changes, the film and music of our origin. If we're members of a political community, we expect to be able to forge alliances with people in Australia and South Africa, uh, as well as Canada, the United States, or England. Uh, and that's a, that's a remarkable change. Um, it opens up so many possibilities. It doesn't determine any particular possibility. So it's a mistake to say that because of network communication, things will be a certain way. Just as it was a mistake to, to suggest that um, the Reformation, the Enlightenment, and the subsequent revolutions in Europe necessarily followed from the printing press. The printing press was a, uh, a condition of that, but it wasn't the sole determination, determinant of that. So technologies work in a way that um, uh, often create unintended consequences in history. Uh, technologies work in a way, I think most importantly, to open up possibilities that were not imaginable before. Uh, that's, that's, that can be profound, um, but sometimes it only gets rendered in science fiction and doesn't actually happen in the real world.